you guys wanted it, so we're going to actually start working on it. Our 302 engine build. We've been discussing this thing forever. Now we actually have a plan because brand new discoveries have been made about what used to be in the Iron Horse. And those discoveries have actually revolutionized our entire, well, plan that I came up with last video. Because check this out. <laughs> To recap what we had decided last video, we had decided based on what I seen out there after tearing down, finishing up the teardown, that we were going to put that one on the back burner, okay, and we were going to focus on this one because this one's already ready to go. I mean, it's machine shopped and you know everything else. It's just literally just waiting to get built with something, right? Except, you know, there's been. The, the one big nagging thing, right, what heads do we use? Our nice aluminum AFR heads, you know, we can't use because we don't have pistons that will accept the 202 intake valve. And this is a standard bore block, which I don't want to go buying aftermarket pistons for a standard bore block, right? You know, it's just, what's the point, right? Well... Before I talk about that anymore, let's talk about what we found out with the engine we just tore down from the Iron Horse. The mysteries have fully been unlocked on what that engine actually is. So we discovered that the crankshaft is a 302 crankshaft out of that, uh, out of that engine. And well, <laughs> <laughs> these are the bearings take a look at them yeah that's some good stuff right there but after taking a closer look we have also discovered that crank was already cut 10 10 10 on the main and 10 on the rods and they were uh oh, over yeah where are these these are clevet bearings both of them were clevet uh, clevet bearings, right? So, you know, that's whatever. That's not the discovery part. This is. It's a 302 crankshaft with 40 over pistons. Look at that. That block is actually 40 over. I cleaned off the surface and there she is. Wow. I, I didn't think it was that... Four, I thought it was either 10 or 30, but they just went right for it with the 40. Holy cow. That's okay, though, because that's actually ideal. It's ideal because, well, you know, I didn't want to buy pistons for a standard board block to build our stroker. Remember, I have a 331 stroker crank over there. Still needs to go to the machine shop itself, but I haven't. Uh... I didn't want to buy 30 or uh, standard bore pistons for that stroker crank, but I would buy 40 over pistons for a stroker crank. Although, that's not the direction we're going because new discoveries, like I said, even more than that. Take a look. Here is our factory piston, right? Just, just a factory 302 piston. Now, these valve reliefs have been the bane of my existence this entire time because they're too small. I can't use my 202 AFR-165 ported, so I have no idea what the, uh, oh, I have no idea what the actual CCs of that intake are anymore because it's been ported, but CNC ported to begin with and porting on top, 165 Renegade cylinder heads. The, 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 you know, the cream of the crop there in terms of cylinder headage. I couldn't use them because, you know, dinky valve relief. And, well, my only two choices were to either fly cut these pistons, which, I mean, I could do, but I, I really didn't want to do. It's just a lot of, it's a lot of messing around. Or buy new standard bore pistons, which I also didn't want to do because, well, you know, pistons aren't cheap. And, you know, if I'm going to buy brand new pistons, I'd want it to be, you know, 
not just standard bore. And they're kind of hard to find in standard bore. I, I have been trying. I suppose the third option would be to have that block bored 30 over, but that's a $250 bill on its own. So I was stuck. For literally, you know, been stuck, right? Don't have a pair of heads that I can use on this. I can't use my FRs. Well, look, we have a lot more valve reliefage on these pistons here. Our 40 over pistons might just allow us to actually use our big 202 intake valves and mount our AFR heads onto that engine we just tore down. Our stroker crankshafts right there needs to go in the machine shop still, but we do have a perfectly good, fresh from the machine shop, never even taken out of the plastic 302 crankshaft sitting right here that we could easily slip into that block. So you know what? I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to get this bad boy up and going. Uh... I'm going to take it to the machine shop, have them boil it, just clean it all up, uh, put some new bearings in it, uh, you know, cam bearings, because, well, you have to if they're going to boil the block, uh, freeze plugs, that kind of stuff. Then I think, you know, we'll get it back, we'll paint it up, and this is going to be the one we're going to rebuild after all, you know? It, it, it's 40, technically, it's a 308. It, it, this went from having a 289 that I thought was a 289 to a 302, which I thought was probably a 302, possibly a 306. Now, you know, it turned out this entire time it had a 308. Well, yeah. neat, right? <laughs> it, it never works out that way. It's always smaller than what you think it is. It never ends up being bigger. Well, now, you know, I mean, unfortunately, now that it's cold outside, you know, I, I wanted to get all this done and brought it inside the house before it got cold. But then I decided, well, you know, we'll just put this one on the back burner, build that one. So I just kind of left everything in here, said, I'll deal with it, you know, this coming spring. To now, we have to go back to, well, you know, we'll, we'll build this one, right? Just never-ending round and round and different decisions getting made but you know this is just the quickest and easiest method of getting something built <coughs> to stick back in there right i mean you know it, it came apart you know everything's looking pretty good i mean there's still you can still see cross hatching in the cylinders a little bit so you know get that bo uh honed out got all the pistons pistons all look great you know i got bearings i got a crankshaft and i have heads so that this is the combo that will be the easiest and quickest to get built and done oh wait but i forgot this one's got a broken broken bolt in it uh not a lot of well there is some meat on there all right, uh, give me a second. <laughs> All right, now there is no issues. <laughs> this thing is perfect. Now, how fitting is it gonna be too? have the same engine we pulled be the same one we throw back in in the spring. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, but that does leave other questions like what's going on with the other build. Just what in the world are we going to do with this poor guy, huh? Well, you know, I think, I think, I think I don't know. I, I don't, I, I have no idea yet. I got these pistons, these forged standard board pistons from uh, Nick McMahon. So I feel like we have to, uh, we have to use those. 
somehow, some way. I don't know. I'll have to think about it. And I want to use that stroker crankshaft somehow, some way. Huh. <sighs> I don't know. I'll have to think about it. That's going to be a, uh, you know, before, you know, after, uh, after we get the other one built, kind of thing. That one is now on the back burner, believe it or not. Wow. Just things change. <laughs> things change on a dime around here. Uh, uh, <laughs> but for the better, because I, you, you guys have no idea how glad I am I discovered this. I was so close to just looking past this, right? Uh, because I was, uh, I didn't even notice, right? I, I didn't even notice. I was just, you know, minding my own business. I was checking to see with, uh, the calipers, you know, I, I had the calipers out. I was checking to see if this had a piston offset to it because it's an aftermarket piston. And I know a lot of the aftermarket ones are just straight, uh, in the middle, but this does in fact have a factory offset on it. That's going to come into play with this whole plan, too. And as I was doing that, I wanted to, you know, cross reference it with, you know, factory piston. And it's only because of the luck of the draw that I had these two things next to each other that I noticed they were not the same. <laughs> And then all the rest is history. I got super excited. You know, I was started measuring. You know, that's that. Look at how much more meat we have here. I, oh, just the universe finally gives me a win. The only thing, though, is we still have the same depth, right, of uh, the same depth. So we may have to address that some way, somehow, to get a little more valve clearance uh, that way. But, you know, the overall shape is there, so that, that, that's what I want. So there we go, that's it. That, that's, that's the entire plan. I have to now go deal with that engine, get it ready, get it in here. Yeah, oh, over there. And that's what we're going to be building. Exciting stuff. It really is. I can't, I still can't believe the luck of the draw. Those pistons probably have enough valve clearance to use those AFR heads. I'm not going to be able to run the camshaft I really want to run with it. But, you know, it's a, it's a start. It's a, it's a good start any hoozle. Even if I don't have the camshaft there, I still, I still have the flow. So, uh, so, uh, you know, the next engine will just take those heads and, you know, plop on there, call her good. All right. That's it for engine building stuff. Uh, XMC updates. Here's your XMC update. That, that's your update right there. What is that? You might be wondering why that is none other than silicone, my good friends. I bridged this side to that side. See that? that that's a, that's a salt. That's a wall of silicone. Why? Well, I mean, you know, you're you're just gonna have to wait till the next XMC video, because you know we we've been progressively, you know, we start out just with that. We added, you know, the air horn on there, right? The the velocity stack. Then we added the shear plate, which is not under there anymore, but, you know, we added that. That improved things a lot with the uh, velocity stack, shear plate, you know. That was all good. But keep in mind, these are a Venturi booster, okay? That is the true design. It's, it's supposed to be a Venturi booster. But if you notice, what is missing, okay? That's your only hint. We are going to be adding the most important part of the entire Venturi booster to this carburetor. You know, in, in the next video. I was going to do it this video, but then I discovered all this stuff, and it's just, you know, whatever. So, there's your update. I feel like this next improvement 
gonna be a doozy. I have a suspicion. All right, that's it for everything, right? That that's that's all I got for you right now. It didn't do much wrenching today, but we did do a lot of thinking and discovery and wow, you know. We had a 308 this whole time and she's going <coughs> she's going back in next spring a little bit better than she was before be a good apples to apples comparison all right i'll catch you next time